Hello guys, so here we are with our next topic from anatomy that is the respiratory system. So what is respiration guys? Respiration is basically a process where an exchange of gases takes place from the outside atmosphere which is rich in oxygen to the inside which is rich in carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is produced by our body cells. Every organism present on this planet, they have their own respiratory mechanisms. From lower invertebrates, they have near diffusion. Talking about arthropods, they have got gills as well as lungs. The first time lungs was seen in molluscans. Talking about the human respiratory system, we have got a series of structure attached one after another to facilitate a normal respiratory cycle. So let's talk about human respiratory system one by one. Human respiratory system starts with the nostrils, then we have the nasal chamber, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, alveoli, which comprises our respiratory system. So one by one, we are going to read about each and every structure. So the first up we have our nostrils. So guys, nostrils, they act as a passage for the entry and the exit of air. The next up, we have the nasal chamber. So nasal chamber just facilitates the exchange of gases. The next, we have the trachea. So the next up, we have the pharynx. Pharynx is a common passage for both food and for air. After pharynx, it is followed by larynx. We also know larynx as the voice box. So the next up, we have the trachea. Trachea is a straight tube extending from the mid thoracic cavity up to the fifth thoracic vertebrae. The trachea further divides into bronchi. These bronchi divide into primary, secondary and tertiary bronchioles. Bronchioles are supported by cartilaginous rings which prevents its collapsing. These bronchioles open up into irregularly, wall, irregularly shaped alveoli. These alveoli are basically or the actual site of diffusion where respiration takes place. Now that we have talked about respiration, the lungs are covered with a layer of the pleural membrane. They function by reducing the friction and they provide support to the lung surface. The lungs are situated in a thoracic chamber, which is anatomically an airtight chamber. Dorsally, it is lined by the sternum, ventrally by the spinal cord, and laterally by the ribs. The thoracic cavity is separated from the abdominal cavity by a thick sheet of skeletal muscles called the diaphragm. The lungs rest on this diaphragm. So now guys, let's discuss about lungs and each and every part of the lung in detail. The lungs are conical in shape and they have a pleural sac. Each lung has an apex, base and three borders. The lungs are divided into lobes and they are divided with the help of folds of the pleural membrane called the fissures. So let's talk about the right lung. The right lung has reportedly more lobes and more fissures. The right lung has got three lobes and two fissures the upper lobe, the middle lobe and the lower lobe and the fissures, the horizontal fissure and the oblique fissure. So the upper horizontal fissure divides the lung into the upper and the middle lobe and the lower fissure divides the lung into the middle and the lower lobe. The heart sits in an impression called the cardiac impression and there is also a groove for the esophagus and there is another deeper groove for the inferior vena cava to pass. The left lung is anatomically known to be smaller than the right lung. It has got two lobes and a narrow fissure. The lungs can further be divided into bronchopulmonary segment. That is a segment in a portion of a lung supplied by a specific segmental bronchus and its own blood vessels. These arteries and blood vessels branch from the pulmonary bronchial arteries run through the center of segments. The veins and the lymphatic vessels along with the edge of the segment. It is known that there are almost 10 bronchopulmonary segments and each segment has a different morphology, size and the blood vessel. So our next topic is the process of respiration, the steps involved in the process and how respiration takes place. So initially the atmospheric air is drawn in and the carbon dioxide rich air is released. The diffusion of the gases takes place across the alveolar membrane which is the actual site of respiration. Then the transportation of gases by the blood followed by the diff diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide at the tissue site. Now this oxygen is ready to be used by the cells of a body. Now guys we will see 
What are the respiratory volumes involved in this? The first up, we have the tidal volume, which is the volume of the air inspired or expired during a normal respiration. That averages up to 500 ml approximately. The next up, we have the residual volume. It is the remaining volume of the air inside the lungs after a forced expiration and that is around 11,000 to 12,000 ml. The next is the vital capacity which is the maximum volume of air a person can breathe in after a forced expiration or the maximum volume of air a person can breathe out after a forced inspiration. And the last we have is the total lung capacity which is the total volume of the air accommodated inside the lungs at the end of a forced inspiration. Guys, now that we have studied about the structures involved in respiration, gross anatomy of a lung, let's get on to the transport of gases. So how does the transport takes place? Blood. Blood acts as a medium for the transport of gases. About 97% of the oxygen is transported by the RBCs. The remaining 3% of oxygen is carried and dissolved in the plasma. So guys, we were talking about carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has various sources to be transported. It is transported by the blood, it is transported in the form of bicarbonate and it is transported by RBCs. So nearly 20 to 25 percent of carbon dioxide is transported by the RBCs, 70 percent almost dissolved in the blood as bicarbonates and almost 7 percent dissolved in the plasma. Here we are with our last topic that is the muscles involved in the respiration. So we have basically the primary and the accessory muscles involved in respiration. The primary muscles include the internal and external intercostal muscles and the diaphragm. The accessory muscles include the pectoralis, scalenes and the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay guys, so let's brief up the today's topic. In respiration, we have learned about the process of respiration, the structures involved in respiration, the anatomy of lungs, transport of gases and the primary muscles involved in respiration. Thank you.